Hello, this is Christian. Welcome. In this episode, we're going to focus on the controller. Before we go there, though, I just want to spend maybe a minute or two just to go over this NVC model. If you are already familiar with this, you can skip ahead. But here is the model that you might see in hundreds or thousands of times already about the NVC. I put here a diagram to show you also the relationship between the client and the server. So this gray bar line here represents the boundary between the client side and the server side. Now the client side in this case is just basically the web browser and then the server side is what it is inside this blue box here. Okay and then behind that you have another server which is a data source because this data source could be another database which is in itself an own separate server or it could be from another data source outside of this server. Okay of course the NVC model here is a what I have here is um, I put it on the server side but it doesn't have to be um, because I'm representing the uh, you know Laravel model, so it's a server-side framework as I put it here. But really, this could also be on the front end as well. Like Angular, for example, is it's an NVC model on the client side only. So um, just focus on the model here as opposed to what is server and client side. Okay, so here are the three major components of the NVC model. We looked at the model already. We created a very simple model called projects. Even though the project's data is not actually a database system a source, it's still a model because we create a class called project that actually um, stores or represents the shape of our data, right? So that's pretty typical for that uh, um, to be developed that way. And then we have the view. We created lots of views already. And the uh, job of the view is really to render content to the browser. That's, that's mainly its job. But you will see that there is a like a push and pull system going on between the model and the view here, where sometimes the model can actually push some data if there's a state change of some sort to the view to render. And the view can also do a pull um, of the model and use that as well, okay? But usually its job is mainly just to render data. Okay, so over here, the controller. The controller is where all the logic happens, all the, we call the actions, right? All the um, processing going on inside the controller. And then it will then either make some state change to your data source if it, if, if it requires it, or it may not require it, it doesn't really matter. And its job is also to select a view to render to the browser, okay? Um, so that's basically what a controller does. And so right now we haven't created a controller yet. It's there, we haven't used it yet. All the code that we've been created so far are actually inside the router. A file called web.php. So now we're going to move those out to the controller area so that our code are more um, siloed into their own specific uh, area. Okay, so we can you know maintain them easily, we can debug them easily, and also the file is not very really bloated. So the router it should be responsible for just routing information, routing process or request in this matter to the controller. Controller is responsible for you know doing anything what's to do in the process here. And then it needs to select the correct view, and then the view is goes, is going to render that to the re, to the browser. Okay, so here we go again. We have the request coming in, and then the response going out. Okay, so let's go and uh, see what we um, can do with our program. So yeah, again, make sure your app is running. All right, so I want to make sure that it's still running over here. Okay, so this is the view, right? And we're going to uh, move these actions to a controller. So this one here is the portfolio page. I'll leave this as is, but when we add a new project, right? I want to move that to the controller. And when we also do the edit, I also want to move that to the controller. And send the word the delete as well. So all these CRUD operations is going to be moved out to its own place. And we have a really simple project here only. So usually when you have a feature or a group of features on your website, you move those out into the own area. And we call those controllers, right? So if you are familiar with the .NET, ASP.NET framework, um, you will see that this is very, very similar to, uh, to that. OK, so let's go and. Uh, uh, I'll leave this running. I'm going to open another terminal here. I'm going to use it. Um, okay. Now, if you go if you go in here, so notice in the routes, our web file. Let me close it for now. 
as you can see, that has a lot of you know actions here. These are called actions, by the way. And also these are routes, right? Routes, but they also perform actions. Actions are these, these are actions. And it's really, you know, very messy if you look at it. It's very messy, it's, it's really hard to find. I even had a hard time looking for this as well. So this is not really clean. We want to move all these out into the own area. Okay, so here in the controller, which is found in the app folder, uh, HTTP controllers, all right? There is one file, which is the base class that all the controllers should extend, all right? So this, we're not gonna touch this file, but we're going to create a controller class in here. And usually by convention, we will use the name of the file called like, you know, user controller, uh, main controller, in our case, I'll call it project controller, okay? You can create the class the file manually yourself, which is okay, but it's not recommended because there's a shortcut for that, right? So if you go to the terminal over here and the command terminal, we go going to use the PHP artisan uh, command to create a controller. So PHP artisan make colon controller and then space will give the name of the controller. So ours, we're gonna be called project controller. Okay, I wanna show you this now as is and I will show you another method. Okay, so hit enter. And it's going to create a class or file called project controller. You can see, if you open that up, it has this already added for us by default. So we just go ahead and add all the events in here. Okay, so you see this is a blank control class. I showed you another one here. If you go and then um, do a very simple one, we call it uh, maybe, you know, um, let's see, test controller, okay? And put a flag called uh, dash dash resource, hit enter. Okay, now we have another file called test controller, but look what you see in here. Check this out, right? You have an index action. Index will be like the home page. You have a create, okay, for adding new data. You have a store, it's kind of similar as store data. Um, you have a show, is a get. And here is an edit for update. And also the update here, same thing, um, one of the other one. This could be, um, you know, the actually for the post, this is the get for the update, okay? And then we have a destroy for delete. So you have actually what's called a CRUD operations already created for you in here, ready to go if you want to go in and use these same functions. Really neat, huh? So ours will be kind of similar, except we call it a different name, okay? So you can keep this and, uh, you know, recreate the controller for the project control and do that, or we can manually do ourselves, okay? So I'm gonna do manual because we have already created the functions. And so I'm gonna delete this one here, not too confusing myself, but I just wanna show you that you can do that by generating that for you, for us, because you know it's very common when we do CRUD operations. All right, so in the controller, what happens in there? What kind of events? All these should be related to the project um, feature. Okay, so if you look at the web file like over here, okay, I'm gonna move basically the add, um, delete, right? Or the edit, two edits here, and we'll figure out which one to use. Maybe it will change a little bit here. And um, the add, add here as well. And then there's a, um, yeah, that's it. This one here, we'll leave it here because it's not, it is a get, but I'll leave it here for now but you can also move it, that's fine. So let's, let's go up here and do something here very quick. All right, so the get, um, the, that's where, where is it at? Okay, let's move the add here, okay? The add here, as you can see, is really simple. We can, I'm gonna copy this, okay, for now. And let me do this way, so you can see a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the add and move over here. I will copy and clean it later, okay? My add. Um, the, the delete this one as well. We over here, and then uh, the edit go here. It's another edit. This is a post, by the way, but that's fine. We'll put it over here, and then there is um, that's the post. That's the yeah, update. 
and this is the add as well. This is the add, but then we add some data. The other one, we just show the form, right? So the add goes in here as well. And then I think that's, yeah, that's it. There's a delete somewhere, we already got it. Um, yeah, we're missing the delete. I probably missed it somewhere. Where is the delete? Okay, right here. So I need to delete as well. Oh, I actually got it. Yeah, I missed, I just right here. Duh. Okay, all right. So over here, now let's go and handle this first, right? And let me close this for now. Okay, so we're gonna create a function here called um, add, okay? And what you can do is um, you can do this. Just to um, actually, yeah, a little bit different because the way I have it here, it would be a function. So I'll just put here a shortcut, F-U-N, okay? And hit tab. And then just put here tab over. This is gonna be called an add. And we don't need anything to go with the add, so no parameters. And then whatever goes in here actually goes in between here. So this, this is a little different here. So I'm gonna basically return, uh, not this one, a user return here, okay? So return statement here or the function here. And it's gonna return to the add. And then the title will be just replace that with this right here. And then I can remove this add. Okay, so that is our add um, feature, right? Now this is the get. So the get here, as you can see, it's only a function. So basically we're gonna remove this, okay? Replace that with the word public. And then the name of the function is called, um, what do we call? I, okay, delete. Okay, so this is the delete one. So we put here function delete, we need the ID, and then we just remove the two text over here and we're done. This is the delete function, as you can see. And then this one here is the edit, okay? So the same thing, remove that, replace with public, and it's function called edit. And this edit function returns the view um, only. Right? So notice we did not use a request. There are two edits here, right? This is coming from the form. This is just a get feature, right? A get request, which just basically render to the view. So we can change this to a different function. Maybe instead of edit, we'll say, um, we'll put like a show edit form. I use a different function for that, all right? And then, uh, so that, yeah, that's all it does. Um, Okay, so the next one here is the edit. So this is the actual edit. So you can use like edit, and then maybe this is for update, right? Like the one example we saw earlier, but it's not entirely up to you. I'll keep it just like that. And this one here will be, um, this is the edit. And it does take the request and ID. Everything here stays the same. We just basically remove the last two characters here. Okay, so you can see, um, let me make this a little bit cleaner. And then here, this is the add. So again, this one here takes a request. It's coming from the data source as opposed to the first one, right? The first one here, we just basically add, show the add form. So I'm gonna change this to say, um, show add form instead, because we're not you know, processing the form yet. And so down the bottom, then this is the actual add function. So I'm gonna change this to say, And then we just remove the last two characters and now we're done. So one problem here is the project, right? Remember this project is coming from the model. So we need to import that in. And all you have to do is put mouse over that, control space bar and select from the add models. And once you do that though, it does make some change in your variable to make sure you change it back to say project. And if you do that correctly at the very top, you're gonna to see that it's imported the app models project class for us to use it. Okay, perfect. So everything looks good here. No error, no mocks here, it looks, looks good. So save this file. Now we need to go and then over here, handle the routes. Okay, so now we're not gonna you know, uh, use this anymore. All we have to do is that when we come to this link add, we're gonna render that using the controller to handle it. And the syntax to do that is this. So this process stays the same. Um, we're going to um, use a, instead of a view, I'm gonna change this to a get, okay? A get the add function. And this part here 
is now the controller part. Controller, you put into an array like this, and the name of the controller is called um, project controller, and colon, colon, class. Okay, so the first parameter is the class. The second is a string of the name of the action. We call it show add form. So really, this is the name of the function that will run when we navigate to this add URL. Okay, the controller should have been being imported automatically. If it did not, make sure you import that up here as well. All right, so that is going to be what our you know routes will look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and, and duplicate this a few times. Just hold down here and copy uh, Alt uh, Shift and then down arrow a couple of times. Um, edit, edit, um, delete. Maybe a couple of those. Okay, so the delete is this. The guy right here. I'm going to copy this URL, make it, and put it right here. Okay. Um, yeah. And then that is going to go to a function called delete. Okay. So we got that. And I can close this. I comment this up for now so I can see what's going on. All right. So we got that one there. The other one is the edit right here. This is the get. So it's going to be right here. And it's going to go to the show edit form okay we're not processing it's a it's a get request so then we can turn this off and then this is the post for the edit this one here is the actual data right so we need to go and then put here the same thing this is going to go to the edit function but then we want to change this to a post and not a get okay and then finally this is the post for the add and then the add is gonna to go to just say add function, right? So these are the CRUD operations for that. And so now um, we can then, you know, let's move this to uh, maybe the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, I guess. Maybe it'll move to the bottom because it's, um, yeah, let's put it right above the get here, okay? Right here. And then I can turn this off. Well, this contact, that's part of that controller. The add here, I don't need it. I'm gonna delete it, okay? You just delete it. You don't need that one there anymore. The uh, edit, I don't need that anymore. The get and edit, so this can be deleted. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. These are for the other ones, right? And these are the other one as well. So you can see here that these five links are going to the controller called Project Controller. And if you save it now, if everything works correctly, it should still work. So let's give it a try, right? We never know. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go to the browser and see what happens. If it crashes, it will let us know right away. So portfolio here looks okay. If I go to the add project, as you can see, it worked just fine. If I go and do a edit, right? Work just fine. And if I do a delete, it should still work just fine. Perfect, okay. Now, how do I know if it's really working or not? Well, you saw we made some changes. So if I go back and change the add to something else, let's say that and the add here, um, if I put add with another D, right? If it doesn't work, it should not go here and it should fail in the add. If I go and you know refresh my page, go to add, as you can see, it failed. It's not found because you know, it's, it's not located. If I put another D here, you will see that it comes back up. Okay, so we know that it's working and working beautifully. Now, um, so this is okay. As you can see, we moved everything out already and uh, it's, it's good as is, okay? Now, I wanna do one more thing here. We learned about prefix previous in one of the previous videos where I wanna change the URL to, you know, usually you call it API or something like that, but I wanted to, show so that your will go to something like you know project slash projects slash add project slash delete and so forth so this is going to be the prefix okay so remember to do that we can group this together inside one particular um a prefix or a group right and we can do that by just you know um creating a route call it prefix we we'll give it a name the prefix and i want to call it projects don't don't put any like um, any other character just like that. It will add the backslash automatically for us, 
and it's going to be called another function called group. And this group here takes a callback function. And then inside this callback function is where we're going to move all of these in, in there. So just drag all these inside the group function and then make sure you terminate that statement and fix it a little bit. And now they are now prefixed with the projects for all these links here. Once we do this though, we have to make some changes to our code, but I do wanna show you that it should work um, like this, okay? And it's pretty, pretty cool because, you know, I'll show you in a minute. So now if I go to portfolio here, if I try to go to the add new project, you will see that now it's no longer work because the URL it says add. But if you type in the projects slash add, right, comes right back. So you can see, I can group these actions under the project's uh, prefix, okay? So that means the link needs to be modified. If you hover over that, down the bottom, you see it just say slash add, I wanna say slash project adds, and same thing with an edit. So you can see that if I do edit, it's not gonna find it because we changed the URL. And not only that, the logo here, it doesn't work anymore, right? It, it, if you saw earlier that this is not working because of the URL here, and when you display images, I'll show you why, you should use the URL or the, um, the asset function uh, to prevent this from happening, okay? So let's go back and do some fixes. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create a variable, okay, right here. I'll call it prefix, set it to projects. And then I'm gonna replace this with the variable prefix. Okay. And then I also need this. And when I create the portfolio, I need to add that down here. So I'm gonna add it as a third parameter here called prefix, point to that variable. I need to use it. So in the function here, you have to put here, use prefix. Okay, so now I can then use this prefix in the portfolio template. If you go to the um, resources and the portfolio right here, open that. Now the add function, I mean, add link right here, it needs to say, right, project. I don't wanna come here and do, you know, project like this. What if I change late in the future, right? I don't want that. So that's why I use the prefix. So therefore, I put here the prefix. If I change the prefix to something else, it automatically updates these. If I, re, if I remove the prefix, change it to an empty statement or empty string, then I'll go back to where it was before. So really, really useful. I'm gonna copy this and do the same thing down here for the other two links, which is the edit and then the delete as well. Okay, so that's good here. Um, perfect, so save that. And then now I also wanna do one thing for the edit as well. The edit here, even the add also. I wanna add, remember we take the action goes to the slash add, it's not gonna find that, right? So you can also do this with the prefix, but then you have to add the prefix to this page, right? So instead of doing this way, I'm going to the same add link anyway, so instead of doing this way, I'm gonna do just real simple using the PHP um, super global called um, server and then call the PHP self. I mean, it, it loads itself, okay? So basically that's what it does. I'll do the same thing with the edit as well. So go here, um, I think here it looks good. The edit form, same thing right here, okay? So instead of edit here, it, I'm going to the same place. So let's put that inside here. And I'm including the ID also. So that means I can merge these together and just use the dot, right? And join them together. And it's gonna say the current file, whatever that is, slash ID. Okay, really simple fix. Okay, um, it looks good here. Let's see what that looks like. And let's go to the browser and make sure it still works. So let's refresh the page here. If I go to the add, and there it is. Now, as you can see, the URL changes. If I look at the source view as well, you will see that the um, action is also changed to the correct place, right? Index slash projects slash add. Perfect, okay? So if I add a new project um, here, you know, call it fab2 and, you know, uh, my interactive page and then HTTP, web2.com, 
click submit and boom there it is right there okay now if i do the edit if you notice on the bottom left url also changes to the edit if i edit that as you can see it loads correctly and if you look at the source view for the action you will see that it changes to that right project slash edit and here's the id for that okay so um <clears throat> Let's see if this is correct. I'm going to go ahead and um, make it to project 24 and then hit submit. And there it is. Uh, no, we did not change that. So um, somehow we didn't process that correctly yet. Didn't update that. Okay, let's see if the delete works though. Let's delete. And there it is. And let's delete them all. Let's make sure that it still does work. And boom. All right. So now if I go and um, uh, clear, remember we do the clear have to go to uh, slash C, Oops. see here. Okay, everything comes back here. Okay, now one more thing I wanna show you, if you do the edit, right? Now that works fine because we find it. What if I change it to one, two, three, four, five? Not found, right? So everything is still good, just as is. Okay, so now let's see why the edit was not working. And um, I think we're pretty much done with this one here. So in the add form, when we load the add, uh, it goes to the controller and um, the add comes in here. So the edit here, the add, okay. Um, I think that looks okay. Um, oh, I mean, not the add, I think it was the edit, right? The edit. Um, yeah, I think it looks fine. We didn't make any changes, so it's just, it should not be here. Uh, but I want to show, maybe it's in here somewhere. We'll, we'll see. Hey, I noticed something that when we look at the view, the source view over here, right? And the edit, right? And the edit here, you see right here, it's kind of small. The URL has, we duplicated the ID here twice. So it's not going to find that ID when we process it. It should just be the 644, 8644 here. And I know why that happens because I wasn't aware of it. But um, if you remember, like in the code here, when we do this, the PHP itself here, that includes the, the part of the URL already, right? So I don't need to include the ID again. If I do that, I'm adding it twice. That's what happens. So I don't really need that. Just get the self and whatever that URL is, it's gonna take that same URL, okay? So that I think that's the, what the issue was. So save that and let's go to the page again and um, see if we can fix the issue. All right, so let's close this and uh, load the page again, make it smaller. And let's edit the first one. Okay, looks good. So this is the URL. If I do a source view again, okay, so perfect. Now you see that the index is going to the right place and the edit ID number is correct. So now it should work. Okay, if I change it to personal site two and we'll just put here uh, something like that, it doesn't really matter and submit. And there it is, perfect. All right, so that is basically how you use controller to control your, um, your your actions. So again, controller, these are called actions. Basically, it's just a function that does the processing here. Remember, in the controller is responsible for fetching data, right? Make changes to a state, which we did make state changes. You can see right here, when we do this, we make state changes, we save them, and we see responsible for selecting which view to render to the view. Okay, so that's done. Now, why don't you go ahead and see if you can create one to move all these functions, all these actions here to another controller, right? So maybe all of these can be grouped into a controller called main controller or home controller. And it will perform all these actions so that it's not, you know, uh, all uh, reside in this web file. And then you can move all of that out. So the only files that you have, well, only function you have here are maybe the, the clear function and uh, maybe the fallback function. The rest will be in the controller and you can use a prefix where you don't have to, but you know you can group something to look something like this. Now here's the, the power of the prefix here. So notice the project is something like that. If I remove it back, it would just do that, right? Delete it and save it. Watch what happens when I go back to the page. If I go refresh the page here, notice if I go to the add, boom, you see that the URL has now been changed back to normal and it should still work just fine. ABC, add test, HTTP, ABC, 
Okay. And everything works beautifully, just like before. I can edit it. I can, so you can see, uh, you know, delete it and so forth. So very powerful feature. And that is what the prefix is used for. Okay, well, any questions, please put in a comment or let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.